Portrait Artist of the Year, Season 7, Episode 5. This is a very uneven episode. Let's get started. And please, if you would, consider giving me a thumbs up and subscribe. That would help me in these efforts. So now we will look at the contestants. So first we'll look at the self-portraits. And this is what they had a lot of time to work on and they submitted to be on the program. Very unusual with the peonies going on in the background. This is a lovely little piece. I also, I have a collection of pieces that are this size, so I'm kind of partial to that. I love this one. Oh, I love this one with the gesture of the hand on the left and then the other hand. It's really evocative, it really, really speaks to me. This one is a much flatter, more of a, uh, a simpler portrayal. And um, let's go on to the next one. Next one is done, I believe, on a wood panel. We keep seeing wood panels showing up. I'm not sure what that is about, but uh, probably might have to do with the cost of canvas. This is an interesting one with chocolate smeared on her face. It's a clever idea and beautifully executed. So we have a good feel going on here. Wow, look at that. Woo, he's a good painter. He might be too academic for them. We know they don't like academic painters. Okay, and this looks like this looks like an etching, but it must be maybe charcoal. I'm not sure. I'm not sure how that's done in black and white. And the last one, oh, fun, a storyteller. All right, this will be a good episode. Let's see who our models are. The first one up is Sean Clifford. She's an actress, and I've seen her in a, a couple of comedies. She really is hilarious. And she came in and said she'd never had a portrait taken before. I mean, done before, and she was very, very nervous, which is interesting to me because... You know, actors are used to being seen. Four hours in, the artist turned their easels around and she is gonna pick one to go home with her, which has nothing to do with the final judging, but is very much an honor. So let's see what she gets to choose from. All right, the first one up, wow, that's dark. That's a very dark and cold painting. Um, but um, yeah, it's a, it's a really good job. Uh, you know, I, I, I really enjoy a lot of color mixing. And that's not what's happening here. This is a much more monochromatic um, exercise. So um, I don't know that it really captured her either. This is a little, this is a little rough. Um, yeah, I don't have a lot to say about this one, and I'm sure I'll forget it. Now this must be the one where we saw the self-portrait where um, it was a very flat representation, and it certainly is here as well. So she's consistent in her style, but it in the past the judges sometimes have responded to this but uh, i'll be surprised if they do today but when we step back and look at it from far away it's a delightful little painting does it look like the model not necessarily but we'll go on to the next one the third one is the peony gal so i guess she likes to put peonies behind which i'm all for because peonies are my favorite flower, the reason I decided to become a painter anyway. I just wanted to see, could I paint a white peony on a white piece of paper? And I found out that I could after about five years of trying. <laughs> it took a long time. Um, but this is a nice piece. It also doesn't quite hit the mark of what she looked like, but it's it's awfully darn close. I think it's as close as, as many could get. So um, this is a very strong piece. Uh, I think this I think she's going to select this one. It's it's very complimentary and it, and it will go really nicely in someone's home. I don't know it has, if it has the impact for winning the program and then becoming a contestant for the final commission, but we shall see, right? We never know. So let's see which one Sean picks. And it's not a surprise to me that she picks the one with the peonies in the background. And that's going to be lovely in her home. So good for her. Now, our next model up is Eddie Marsden. He's an actor. I most recently saw him in the, um, the film a, a Man, His Wife, and a Canoe. It's an amazing true story of um, subterfuge. <laughs> but I've seen him in lots and lots of things. I just can't even remember what they are. But he has a very familiar face to me. He has kind of an impish look. And they put him in, in front of like almost like a stylized forest. So that's kind of adorable. Uh, four hours in, the artists turn their easels around, and this looks problematic to me from the get-go, but uh, 
I'm just, oh boy, that middle one's going to be a little bit difficult to talk about. But let's talk about the first one up. Yeah, so this is the person who had that very small piece at the beginning, and she nailed it. I mean, this absolutely looks like him. The coloration is really beautiful. Uh, oh, look at the light that's caught in the tip of the ear at the top. Oh, God, it just sings. Oh, so beautiful. Wow. So um, bigger is not always better. This is a very small painting, and it's an absolute gem. I'm, I'm rooting for her. She, uh, I, I want to see so much more of what she does and plan to visit her website. But you can see how small it is. I typically will paint in that size, too. It's probably an 8x8 eight eight or, mm, yeah, probably an 8x8 eight eight square. I do love a square. I love to paint in a square. This one is the one I thought is a little bit more problematic for me. It doesn't have a resemblance to him. The colors are so harsh. Gosh, I just prefer more blended kinds of colors. It's just, you know, you're really, really bright against really, really dark. It's, um, you know, for me, it starts to look like a variety of cutout shapes as opposed to forms. But that's the style, and I'm not opposed to it. I just don't know how effective it is. And when you, when you pull back, that green in the background, it, it needs to be tamped down. It's just discordant with everything else that's going on. So just on, on color alone, I have a little bit of problem with it. Now, no problem with color on this one, because there is none. <laughs> Solves that problem. Um, yeah, so this looks like some sort of pen and ink, perhaps, I guess. Um, it's a beautiful job, but I don't know that they'll pick something monochromatic to move on. I know in the past that they have, but in order to win the program, I'm not so certain about that. Although a little, a little informant in the comments did tell me that, uh, that at one point someone does win with, uh, with a black and white, uh, portrait. So, um, so I don't know, maybe this will be the one. We'll find out in about a second. Eddie's going to pick one to take home with him, and let's see which one he picks. I think he's going to pick that little gem. That's the one I would pick. I would pick that even if it wasn't me. Yeah, how could you not pick that one? Oh, perfect painting. All right, on to the next and last one. This is Paul Mescal. He also is an actor, and I'm not familiar with him. Um, I think from what they were talking about, he might be in some sort of science fiction adventure of some kind, and so that would just not be something I'm familiar with. So let's look. The artists turn their easels around, and we get to see what they've done. And um, this will be interesting. All right, here's the first one up. Yeah. Oh, boy. i um, not excited about the colors of this at all. Very, very dull. Not, not that dull colors can't be beautiful, but I, I'm... This is just me personally. I, I don't like black in a painting. I like any value substitution for black. As soon as black comes in, everything kind of gets deadened down. There's a lot of black and white going on in this painting. And what I mean by that is there's been a lot of black and white paint used in his mixes. And so the result is, over time, you lose brightness and you end up with a very dull painting overall. You don't mean for it to happen. You don't even notice it's happening. But, but it does. Either white or black will tamp everything down. This is a much, much nicer color work here. Yeah, I really, yeah, this really speaks to me. That's a beautiful job. Um, does it look like him? Yeah, I think it does. Um, oh, boy, that blue behind is really, really beautiful. Look up close. Really nice detail. Yeah, that's a nice job. Now, I know black is kind of used here, but it's, it's not black. It's not black from the tube. Uh, there's been some considerable mixing done, so it's not a pure black. So overall, the color and brightness has, has been maintained while she's been able to um, make it read as if, uh, you know, that is human flesh. It doesn't have a lot of color value substitutions going on, but it's it, it works really, really well. Here's the last one. Oh my, this doesn't look like him at all. So they've missed the likeness. I like his style, though, that really, really soft way that forms blend into other forms. I think that's beautiful. But um, but being Portrait Artist of the Year, I think it has to have a likeness to the sitter. I think that's pretty darn important. Uh, this is a nice detail from the painting, so that's a good job. And let's see, I think we get a chance to pull back and see what happens. Um, yeah, pull back. It's just not as strong as uh, as that second one that we saw. And oh, Although it does look a little bit more like him from this angle. 
Boy, that's a tricky thing about painting, isn't it? If you're a painter, sometimes you look at what you've done, you think, oh, I've nailed it, and then you go to a different angle, and you think, no, I haven't. Oh, portrait painting, such a, such a tricky, tricky thing to do. So let's see which one he picks to take home. Paul Mescal is going to pick, oh, this one. Yeah, that's one I would have picked too. I think it's the strongest one. And now we will get ready for the final judging. Now this happens after an incredibly long day. Four hours have been spent on the painting, but there's been a lunch break. There have been interviews and interruptions. You have to travel to get there. You have to set up your things. Oh my goodness, it must be just an absolute marathon of the day that you would have to recover weeks from. So let's see who our three uh, semi-finalists for this particular episode would be. I have my eye on a couple of people, but I'm nearly always wrong about who they pick, so let's see what they do. Oh, okay, they picked this one. Yay, because I think this is a gem, and, um, and I, I so much want to see more from this particular painter, so I'm glad that they chose this one. It is a very, very small piece, and that might count against her because we know the final commissions tend to be fairly large, but, um, but that's a concern for later if indeed she does move on. Let's see who the second uh, participant in the semifinals is. Oh, it's this one. This one really underwhelmed me. Wow. Okay. Uh, hashtag Joe is always wrong. So, um, they picked this one. I, I don't have an explanation for why. Oh, and this one. Yeah, I do have an explanation for why you would pick this one. This was definitely the strongest one in her particular heat. So, um, boy, I think it's between that small one and then the, this one. But now we get a chance to see the artist's self-portraits next to what they did today. So we can see what they do when they have unlimited time next to what they can do when they only have four hours. And all right, there we go. Both are really beautiful to me, and I don't have a problem with small works. I think small works are just as important as larger works, and she's got the goods. I, I'm going to pursue more. I want to know more about her. And the next one up is this one. Oh, the, the chocolate lady. Oh, I can see what, yeah, that's, a cons that's consistent work over time. Oh, I think they're going to pick her, but I don't know. Um kind of really enjoy the movement that she puts in paintings. And I've already talked about how much I, I do like her color work. So nice job. This last one, oh, I'm so disappointed. Okay, so he just wasn't on his game today. That self-portrait is just fabulous. And I don't know, something happened today that just didn't let him perform to the, to the ability that he can. Now we get to the final judging, which... You must be in absolute pins and needles. There are semi-finalists, and all look really great from far away. I don't know. There are two I would advance, but, you know, there can only be one winner, so we, we've we learned we have to live with that. And the winner is... Dun, 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 dun. I'm really happy because the winner is one I would have chosen. I love this painting. So, yay, we get to see more of what she has to offer when we get to the semi-final episodes. So remember to keep the white to your paper white, your paints wet, mask for value, mix for color, and I'll see you next time. Okay, bye-bye.